Hello students, welcome to this module on nonlinear dynamics which is uh, part 3 in our series of uh, modules on this uh, topic. This is part of the course uh, CHE 614 Introduction to Hydrodynamic Stability uh, at IIT Kanpur and uh, in the previous uh, module we discussed uh, rather in the previous two modules we discussed uh, dynamics and bifurcations in 1D systems in one dimensional systems remember that one dimensional systems have only one uh, variable a dependent variable x let's say so in general you will have a nonlinear differential equation describing the evolution of x subject to an initial condition uh, x0 okay this is the initial condition and uh, this is in general a parameter a control parameter which you can vary at will uh, experimentally and uh, you were interested in understanding what are the f uh, steady solutions which are known as fixed points and uh, uh, whether the fixed points are stable or unstable and uh, in the topic of bifurcations we talked about how fixed points emerge or disappear upon change in parameter how qualitatively qualitative changes in the solutions as lambda is varied okay so in this context of bifurcations we discussed three classes of bifurcations uh, we discussed uh, uh, the first dis uh, bifurcation we discussed was the saddle node bifurcation wherein uh, fixed points suddenly appear uh, or disappear as a uh, parameter lambda is varied um, secondly we had uh, transcritical bifurcation wherein uh, there is an exchange of instability that is there are two fixed points for a given a choice of the parameter lambda now one of it is stable the other is unstable now as you change the parameter at the point of bifurcation the stability uh, the nature of stability of these two fixed points interchange and uh, suddenly the one that was stable now becomes unstable and vice versa we also discussed uh, uh, pitchfork bifurcations uh, and there are two subclasses supercritical and uh, subcritical here uh, in supercritical pitchfork there is a solution that is stable and as at the point of bifurcation that becomes unstable but two new solutions emerge and in subcritical pitchfork uh, you can have uh, instability to finite amplitude perturbations even uh, at uh, parameters when the system is linearly stable now in this module what we'll do is we will discuss uh, 2D systems. First, for the sake of simplicity, we will discuss linear 2D systems. Okay. Um, in one dimension, the phase space is just a line. I told you that we can think of it as a phase line. Okay. This is the variable x that's going. So if you start off somewhere in this uh, line okay either you have to go in this direction depending on your initial condition so whether you you'll go in this direction or come back in this direction and the moment you see a fixed point you see a stable fixed point you're stuck there okay and if the fixed point is unstable then uh, trajectories will move away from that fixed point okay and if there is no neighboring stable fixed point the trajectories will fly away to infinity this is all that can happen in uh, one uh, in one d that is the dynamics is relatively uh, uncomplicated so all trajectories will move monotonically towards the neighboring steady states or um, once they reach a steady state they will s stay put there there's nothing else uh, w one can expect in 1D but in 2D and higher dimensions more complicated uh, and interesting trajectories can happen imagine if uh, you are asked to just walk on a narrow lane you can just go walk along in the forward direction or in the backward direction that's the only degree of freedom you have on the other hand if you are asked to uh, walk on a on a playground then you can do all kinds of motion you can go round or you can 
you know do all complicated uh, you know motions in, in a two dimensional space right in the same way phase trajectories can also uh, exhibit complicated motion in uh, two dimensional space and and higher dimensional spaces so we'll take the case of 2d systems and linear systems uh, to begin with uh, the generic the most general two dimensional linear system uh, two dimensional meaning there are two dependent variables x and y and x dots and y dots are the time derivatives right and uh, here a b c d are parameters okay now we can concisely represent this as x dot is equal to a matrix dot x where x is the vector x y and a is the matrix a b c d okay and uh, the fixed point is obtained by setting x dot vector is 0 that is the solution is time independent right so if I do this then uh, x equal to 0 x star stars remo remember that stars denote fixed point so x star is equal to 0 is always a fixed point regardless of of the matrix C okay now um, I'll give you a very simple example that you might be familiar from your high school physics or uh, class uh, class 12 physics this is that of a simple harmonic oscillator you have a wall in which uh, you connect a spring and a mass the spring constant is k the mass is m okay and if you write newton's law of motion to this spring mass system you'll get m x double dot plus k x zero this is the restoration force elastic restoring force of the spring okay and this is newton's law for this particular example right now i can write it as a 2d system by saying that x dot the rate of change of position is the velocity and the rate of change of velocity which is given here is nothing but minus k by m x so these are the two or you can even write x dot is equal to v v dot is equal to minus omega squared x where omega squared is k by m this is the frequency omega is the frequency of the motion or periodic motion um, so if I look at the phase plane remember that now you have two uh, variables x and y now if you look at the phase plane okay let me draw these uh, first let's draw the uh, trajectories and then we'll try to draw the uh, phase curves okay the trajectory curves in a more smooth manner so let's first try to draw the trajectories now let's consider uh, x equal to 0 when x equal to 0 v dot is uh, uh, 0 right and v is equal to x dot okay or or in put another way uh, sorry this is not x y this is uh, x position and velocity okay okay this is velocity in this direction position in this direction okay when x equal to 0 v is equal to oh, x dot is equal to v okay the rate at which uh, x is going to increase is directly proportional to v when v is positive therefore the rate of the direction of motion of x will be in this direction v is negative it will be in this direction similarly when v is uh, sorry when v is 0 okay then v dot is given by v is 0 means you are in this axis right x is 0 means you are in this axis v is 0 means you are in the x axis right when v is 0 then uh, you will find that v dot is minus proportional to negative of x so when x is positive the motion will be in this direction because v will decrease whereas when x is negative v will increase and you can draw the paths in the remaining 
parameter space. So what you will see is that this appears like a closed curve. Okay, and if you were to draw this in a more continuous manner, this is uh, again x v. If you were to draw this in a more continuous manner, then what you will get is okay. So you will get closed uh, orbits. Okay you'll get uh, closed orbits just give me one minute let me position these in a more symmetric manner okay you'll get closed orbits Okay, at the xy plane, and uh, the origin in the xy plane represents x equal to zero and v equal to zero. That's a fixed point. Why is the origin a fixed point? If you go to the governing equation here, uh, if we were to set both x dot and v dot is zero, then v is zero, x is zero is a fixed point. So the origin is a fixed point. it represents the static equilibrium of the spring mass system whereas uh, uh, if you have any finite initial condition for velocity and uh, position then depending on the magnitude of the velocity and position you will your trajectory will be in any of these curves okay so these are closed orbits what is interesting is that uh, if you look at a given uh, position so this orbit, this uh, uh, phase trajectory goes in an elliptical fashion and comes back to the same position, meaning that if I plot x as a function of time, uh, depending on its initial condition, let's say you start at zero, then it will be, it's going to be periodic in time. So closed orbits in the phase plane represent time periodic motion or oscillations okay so this is in the context of a simple harmonic oscillator now let's try to um, understand another simple uh, two-dimensional system another example we'll try to understand this qualitatively dx dt is a x this is the differential equation and a I'm going to take it to be a 0 0 minus 1 where a is a parameter a can be less than 0 equal to 0 or greater than 0 okay now of course in uh, the matrix form this is nothing but x dot y dot is a 0 0 minus 1 times x y implying that uh, x dot is ax y dot is minus y or x dot is nothing but x at time t equal to sorry if I solve this x of t is x at time t equal to 0 e to the a t and y of t is y at time t equal to 0 e to the minus t okay and uh, by the choice of this matrix these two differential equations are uncoupled okay and therefore uh, solving them becomes uh, trivial um, we can now understand the phase trajectories in the phase plane for this model system okay so let's uh, draw the xy plane or the yeah here it's just the xy plane now what are the steady state solutions or fixed points uh, the fixed points are obtained by simply putting x dot is 0 y dot is 0 which will give you x equal to 0 y equal to 0 so this is a fixed point origin is a fixed point okay now if you look at other 
uh, trajectories. Now we have to look at various sub cases. Now first I am going to consider a is less than a is negative and it is less than minus 1. Okay. So it has a magnitude that is larger than 1. Okay. That is what I meant. Now if I draw the phase trajectories using the solutions we have just drawn here. Now a is negative and a magnitude of a is much uh, larger than 1. What it will mean is that uh, if you start any from any initial condition here, you will go all the way very close to uh, the x axis, sorry the y axis because we are x equal to 0 and then the decay of y will take over. Okay. Similarly, something like this. Okay, and this is a fixed point that is stable. So this is called a stable node. Node. Okay. Now, if you consider a less than uh, sorry, if you consider minus 1, 0, then the opposite happens in the sense that you will have things approaching the x-axis very rapidly and then approaching the origin very slowly. Okay. This is also a stable node. Uh, is also a stable node. Okay. Now, if A is greater than 0, that is when the interesting thing happens. Right? If A is greater than 0. Again, let us draw the phase plane. All right. Now, the origin is always a uh, fixed point. Now, it becomes an unstable fixed point. Okay. Now, what will happen is only along this y-axis, if you give an initial condition exactly on the y-axis, will you flow towards the origin. All other paths will diverge away from the origin. Okay. Now, this is reflected in any path, any random initial condition that you will see appear like this, the flow will appear like this. Okay. Now, out here along this direction, if you start exactly on the y axis, you will go towards the fixed point. So, this is called a stable manifold. Okay. This is the set of initial conditions, this is the space of the set of initial conditions that go towards the fixed point. Now, you also have unstable manifold, which is the set of initial conditions such that uh, you will go away from the fixed point. Okay? As you go forward in time, you will go away from the fixed point. Now, uh, you can classify linear systems, linear 2D systems. based on uh, what is called the growth rate or eigenvalue. So, let us write the solution x of t is e to the lambda t times v. Okay. Now, v is a vector that is independent of time. Okay. So, we had x dot is a x. So, when you substitute x uh, instead of x dot you will have lambda e to the lambda t v is equal to a times uh, instead of x you are going to put e to the lambda t v. So, this is nothing but lambda v 
e to the lambda t is e to the lambda t a v. Now we can cancel this. So you will get what is called an eigenvalue problem, right? Because now you will get a v is equal to lambda v. And uh, this is an eigenvalue problem. Okay. Now to find the eigenvalue, you have to put determinant of a minus uh, lambda i is zero, and uh, this means determinant of uh, a minus lambda b c. This is zero, so I can rewrite this in the form of uh, a characteristic equation: lambda squared minus tau lambda plus delta is zero where tau is trace of a and lambda is determinant of a okay now if we solve this quadratic equation one gets the eigen values and uh, so this is uh, a plus d this is ad minus bc okay Okay, now you can find the two solutions. Lambda 1 is tau plus square root of tau squared minus 4 delta by 2. Lambda 2 is nothing but uh, tau minus tau squared minus 4 delta by 2. Okay, now if lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2, that is, you have two distinct eigenvalue, eigenvalues, then the eigenvectors are linearly independent. Okay, and uh, they span the entire two dimensional plane. Okay, so any initial condition on, on the plane can be written in terms of linear combinations of the two eigenfunctions okay where uh, v1 and v2 are the eigenfunctions corresponding to lambda 1 and lambda 2 the two eigenvalues so any the solution x of t can be written as the linear combination e x c1 e to the lambda 1 t times v plus c2 e to the lambda 2 T V. Okay, this is the general uh, solution for uh, the system of equations based on uh, the eigenvalue of the problem. Okay, eigenvalue of the matrix. So let's take an example again. Let uh, A be equal to one one four minus two. If you do the eigenvalue analysis, you will find that lambda 1 is 2, lambda 2 is minus 3. That's what you will find for the eigenvalues. Okay, And the corresponding eigenvectors are v1 is 1, 1 and v2 is 1, minus 4. Okay, So, x at any time t is given by c1. 1 1 e to the 2 t plus c 2 1 minus 4 e to the minus 3 t okay this is the general solution now provided you give an initial condition like this okay it's 2 minus 3 then one can write x of t is nothing but a to the after fixing the constants you will find that c1 is equal to 1 c2 is equal to 1 then you will find that x of t is e to the 2t plus e to the minus 3t and y of t is nothing but e to the 2t minus e to the plus 3t okay 
So this is how uh, one finds the uh, nature of uh, the solutions in two-dimensional problems. You can of course uh, try to plot it in the 2D plane like in the pre-harmonic oscillator problem right which we just did in this module earlier. Okay, So this is the unstable fixed point. The origin is an unstable fixed point. So what will happen is trajectories will come close. So first let me draw the stable manifold. Okay. That's a stable manifold. Let me explain this in a minute. Okay. Now, what are these? These are the uh, eigenfunctions in the xy plane. Uh, notice that uh, the eigenfunction for v1 is 1, uh, 1. The eigenfunction, so that will appear like this. The eigenfunction of v2 is 1 minus 4. That's what I am showing here. The eigenfunction for v1 will appear like this. Okay. So, here I would write uh, about this. So, this is the stable direction or the stable manifold and this is the unstable direction or the unstable manifold. Okay. Now, if you want to draw, so how do I get this? These are from the eigen functions of the problem that we just derived. If you plot the eigen function, this is 1, 1 this is 1 minus 4. Okay, so, you can draw the trajectories for other parameters values also. It is going to look like this. Of course, it is symmetric. So, let me okay. and uh, you will also have something like this. Now, along this direction, things are moving in this towards the fixed point, whereas along the x direction, things are moving away from the fixed point. Such a point is called a saddle point. A saddle point is one in which you have uh, the flow to be stable towards the fixed point in one direction, and these are the two directions of the eigenvectors in the previous example. Okay. So, saddle point is one in which there are uh, along one direction things are stable and in the direction orthonormal to this things are unstable. Okay. So, this is uh, an example of uh, uh, flow in two dimensions using a very simple uh, illustrative example. So, I will stop here and I will continue from uh, this point on in the next uh, module. Thank you.